الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين So we after we finished the section of uh, الضاد and الضاء uh, we start the new section after that of الجزرية which is uh, النون والميم باب النون والميم المشددتين والميم الساكنة uh, this is al-bab al-tasi' al-bab al-tasi' this is section 9 of al-jazariya this is section 9 of al-jazariya uh, it is bab al-noon wal-meem al-mushaddadatayn wal-meem al-sakina as we mentioned the word bab means section or chapter or uh, i think section here is better باب النون مضاف مضاف إليه the باب of the noon والميم المشددتين the noon and the meme that have شدات noon with شدة and meme with شدة so look that's a separate rule okay and many many uh, يعني uh, students when they took the noon ساكنة test they got confused about this issue and to show you that it's important يعني the scholars they mentioned it separately Noon and Mim Mushaddadatayn. Why? Because they have a rule, a separate rule. They have a name. As we will see, they are called Ghunna letters. Wal Mim is Sakinati and the rules of Al Mim is Sakina. We will do this and we will do the Noon Sakina rules together. So we will include section 9 and 10, inshallah, together. We will make them in one section and their test will be one test. So let's say al-babain or al-baban al-tasir wal-ashir. Okay, tasir wal-ashir. Sheikh Ayman told me, subhanAllah, when I sent him a message, so he told me this wow, you don't separate it like this. So I'm used to it all my life. So subhanAllah, they benefit you when you connect with the scholars, they benefit you. MashaAllah, in everything, in their words, in their speech, MashaAllah. He saw something on my profile, on my WhatsApp profile, and he gave me, MashaAllah, a piece of advice. May Allah bless him and uh, bless all of our sheikhs and teachers and always uh, not disconnect us from them, neither in this world nor in the barzakh nor in the akhirah. Amin, ya Rabbana, amin. Amen. So sections ten, 9 and 10. Sections 9 and 10. So we're going to start with the uh, section 9. Uh, what does he say, rahimahullah ta'ala? If, if I take you uh, very quickly back to the like, skeleton, let's say, or the, 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 the general plan of Imam Ibn al-Jazari, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, what does he started with? He started with an introduction, right? Allahumma uh, salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. What does he say? What does he say? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. He said يقول راجي رحمة يقول يقول راجي يقول what يقول راجي عفوي رب سامعي محمد I'm mixing between this and between the خريدة يقول راجي عفوي رب سامعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي محمد بن الجزري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قاريه أي علمة so he started with an introduction, praising Allah, sending salawat for the Prophet ﷺ. That was the introduction. Then he started the most important uh, section and, and foundation in reciting the Holy Quran, which is what? What was it, guys? Makharij yeah. al-Huruf. Where, where and how every letter is produced. After that, he talked about Section three, sifat al huruf, the attributes of the letters, not where the letter is produced at or how it is. The the modality or the way it is produced with, is it produced with a curved tongue, for example, with heaviness, with lightness, with safir, with the breath, with no breath, is the sound continuous, is is it cut off, etc. So that was sifat al huruf, which is the second main important topic. And these two topics, Maharaj and Sifat, by the way, they are they are existent, or you find them in the Arabic language books. 
they used to put them in the Arabic language books because uh, these are how these are basic topics how you pronounce the Arabic letters correctly whether you're reading Quran or you're reading hadith or you're reading or you're reading poetry or prose or anything in classical correct Arabic so that's why since the Holy Quran is in Arabic he started with and, and the scholars they start and they mention these main things maharij and sifat before anything before you talk about ghunna or ikhfa or idram or ivhar we need to work on the pronunciation of our letters make sure we are pronouncing every letter the right way with the right sifat and that is mandatory okay and and he mentioned that uh some sifat not all sifat are mandatory some sifat the sifat that if you don't apply the sifat that are that if not apply the change the meaning to the letter into another letter or change the letter into another letter it's mandatory to apply those sifat like heaviness of some letters, heaviness of some letters. Okay, after that he, so that was the third section, then what did he uh, cover? Uh, section four, that was Babu uh, Tajweed, right? So after he talked about Maharaj Sifat, then he's telling us the rulings of learning Tajweed. Tamam? وَالْأَخْذُ بِالتَّجْوِيدِ حَتْمُ اللَّازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ so that was section four. Then with section, uh, so these are the main topics. And in, in that section about Tajweed, he defined Tajweed and he told you what is Tajweed is, is all about. Makharij al Harufi was, he said, Id wajibun alayhimu muhattamu is, is necessary man uh, obligation on them, on the, those who want to read the Quran. And ya'lamu to know Makharij al Huruf, see, number one, was sifat. Then he said, uh, Also knowing tajweed and مواقف, where to stop and where to resume. You cannot just stop anywhere in the ayah or resume from any word in the ayah because that also changed the meanings. So tajweed is as, uh, or tartil as mentioned about Sayyidina Ali regardless of the of the authenticity but the meaning is correct which is what tajweed al huruf wa ma'rifatu al wuquf to pronounce the letters correctly and to know where to stop and where to resume and to know the waqf and the stopping uh, properly then imam ibn jazari mentioned section 5 which was i think the uh, uh, what was section 5 guys tarqiq right uh, باب التنبيهات right? تنبيهات اللي هي الترقيق سميناها باب التنبيهات some notes uh, and ترقيق uh, so he uh, drew our attention to some uh, common mistakes in some letters right uh, on some letters to pay attention to them and then he mentioned the ra and the cases about the ra that was six, and then he moved to seven, which was what? The tafkhim, al-lamat wa ahkam mutafarriqa, right? About the lam. So it was like a continuation with some special rules about some special letters and some extra emphasis on some common mistakes. And then he mentioned the baad and the va. Again, it is to emphasize on common mistake which is spread among some people in the past and until our time, which is mixing between Baad and Dha. So do you notice now that, subhanAllah, the, the order he is going through, he started with the foundations, and then he gave you three sections about some common mistakes. Common mistakes basically in tafkhim, tarqiq, in uh, mix, changing a letter, so basically, these three sections, they refer to the main section. They're about maharaj and sifat. He wants you to apply maharaj and sifat correctly and avoid all those common mistakes. Now, he starts a new section, which is now the, let's call it the supplementary or beauty, beautifying rules of tajweed. Tamam? That now something specially or specialized uh, or special for the Quran, which is what 
extra ghunna. Extra ghunna in some cases. Okay, extra ghunna in some cases. And applying some rules when you're joining or when you when some letters meet or join, you apply certain rules like ikhfa, idram, merging, hiding, etc. Changing like qalb, etc. These rules that we're going to start today, if you don't apply them, they're not going to change the meaning, except in few rare cases. We're going to mention, inshallah. But that's why I'm. my point is, see how this order is going in a very, mashallah, amazing way. That, subhanAllah, I didn't think about it before, but uh, this is how it is, right? This is how it is. So he says, rahimahullah ta'ala, in line 62, uh, as you can see in the screen, you can see the, the line, the picture and the line clearly, right? Right, guys? Yes. وَأَظْهِرِ الْغُنَّةَ مِن نُونٍ وَمِن مِمٍ إِذَا مَا شُدِّدَا وَأَخْفِيًا يلا, let's get used to this line quickly. وَأَظْهِرِ الْغُنَّةَ مِن نُونٍ وَمِن يلا يا شباب. One more time. All of you unmute yourself and repeat. وَأَظْهِرِ الْغُنَّةَ مِن نُونٍ وَمِن أظهر Wow, this wow, anyone knows what this wow means? This wow is called istinafiya for resumption. And yani, he last thing he said about the bad wasafiha jibahuhum alayhimu. Last line he said in the previous section. What did he say? Wasafiha jibahuhum alayhimu. Make the ha in jibahuhum and alayhimu make it pure and clear and give it its right. And now he's saying, wa and, and what? Adhir. Adhir means show from izhar, right? Or make it clear. Okay, adhir, make it clear or show. Uh, and by the way, as we mentioned here, the names of these sections and dividing al jazariya into sections, this is from the scholars just to make it easier. Okay, as I showed you the manuscript of al jazariya that Imam, uh, that Sheikh Ayman depended on, I showed you some parts of it that it doesn't have these like names of the sections or division of the sections. So, adhir, adhir is a command, fa'al amr. Okay, fa'al amr. Uh, means show, right? Fa'al amr. In Arabic, fa'al al amr, for the addressee, the masculine addressee, should, if it doesn't have a, a mad letter at the end, what should it have? Yalla, Arabic, uh, Arabic students. Who, who's doing Arabic here? Sister uh, Kalthum, sister, who's doing Arabic? Sheikh Adnan. Should have, sukun. should have sukun. Exactly, should have a sukun, right? So we say, for example, iqra, mm -hmm. right? Iqra bismi rabbika, right? We say, qif means stand up. We say, usmut, for example, be silent. When the addressee is a masculine, huh? masculine, and it doesn't have a mad letter at the end or illa letter, alif or waw or ya, then uh, what should there be at the end on the last letter? Sukun. Here, wa adhir. So it should be adhir, but we see here, he said, wa adhiril ghunnata. Why Ahmad Ansari? He's saying adhiril ghunnata, not adhir, adhir with sukun. Why he changed the sukun into a kasra here in this example? Do you know? Was it because there's a kasra on the ra? Why he made a kasra? It should be sukun. It is originally sukun. Why he made it a kasra? Because the next letter is alif. So you huh? Why? Why? This is Hamzat Wasl, right? Al Al Ghunna. So we're gonna go to the lamb. Right, so Adhi Ril Ril Ra Sakina and Lam Sakina. So two consecutive sukuns. What do we do? What do we, you thought you ran away from me, you and Omar, right? Here you here you go. The question came back to you. 
يلا so why what, what's the rule again we have two consecutive sequences what do we do yeah it's written bad you skip it huh okay we look at the letter of the first sequence is it a mad yeah. letter here is it a mad letter uh, no. what is okay. it it says it is it's a what is we said if we have two consecutive sequences we look at the letter of the first sequence what is the letter of the first sequence here in this example hmm? do you see the two consecutive sequences i draw them here on the screen oh, yes, do they yes. appear yes. so the first what's the letter of the first sequence the first sequence is a ra exactly is it a mad letter no so what do we do to avoid the two consecutive sequences we have to change that sequence into what to a kasra right that's what he did he said wa real right Okay, Omar, next question for you, Omar. Omar, you're here? I don't yeah. see you. Yeah, keep your video on. Yalla, get ready for the next question, huh? Okay. At any moment. Okay. Okay. Bismillah. Wa adhiri al Show the ghunna. Make the ghunna clear. Adhiri al min noonin. Adhiri al ghunna. Al ghunna is the nasalization. Okay, this sound that comes from the nose. That's the ghunna. And we will... Read the definition later on. Show that ghunna. Make it clear. Adhir al min noonin. Means of the noon. Of the noon. Min noonin. Any noon. Huh? Noonin. Wa min mimin. And of meme. Any meme. This is nakira. Indefinite. Any noon. Any meme. Ida. If. Ida. If. إذا ما شددا شددا this is مبني للمجهول شددا means if they both have become or have been made مشدد ماشي شددا dual this is passive voice dual إذا ما شددا okay the noon and the mim means the حرفين إذا ما شددا يعني هذين الحرفين إذا ما شددا if they are made مشدد what do we do make the غنة clear okay that's the literal meaning guys but before we move into the details who can tell me here he said ما so does that mean إذا ما شددا means if they are not مشدد or what who can tell me Anyone knows this is a very famous rule in Arabic. I think ma, ma, ma isn't is uh, contextual. So here the meaning won't be in the sense of negation. It would be in the sense of like what or referring to. The if object. what should be that, it doesn't work. If you say it's, it means what. So this ma, the scholars, our sheikhs, may Allah have mercy on him, Sheikh Rajab Deeb and uh, the Grand Mufti of Syria, Sheikh Ahmad Kaftar, may Allah raise their levels. I always like to, anything we learned from them, I like to mention, even though it's basic Arabic rule, but we heard it from them in the lecture, they will even teach it to the public. They say, they say, أخي أفيدك فائدة كل ما بعد إذا زائدة What do they say? أخي أفيدك فائدة My brother, let me give you a benefit. أفيدك فائدة كل ما بعد إذا زائدة every ما that comes after إذا is زائدة is additional is extra just for emphasis it doesn't have the meaning of negation at all تمام anyone can repeat that benefit أخي أفيدك فائدة كل ما بعد إذا زائدة in the Holy Quran in Arabic in poetry when you read إذا ما you know that ما is additional or extra and just for emphasis and doesn't have uh, the meaning of negation. Mashi, who can repeat that? Only the last <laughs> part. <laughs> Yalla, Akhi Ufidu Kafaida Kulu ma bada ida zaida. Akhi Ufidu Kafaida Kulla ma bada ma zaida. Kulu Kulu ma bada ma zaida. La mas Kulu ma bada ma mazbut ma ulhe. كل ما بعد إذا زائدة. أوكي. أيوة. كل ما بعد إذا زائدة. أحسن تبارك الله فيك. Anyone wants to try? 
شيخ uh, only the last words can يلا يلا كل ما كل ما بعد إذا زائدة excellent every ما that comes after إذا is زائدة أخي أفيدك فائدة كل ما بعد إذا زائدة تمام we're done with this we understood every word in this line finally the last word وأخفيان is not related to the noon and ميم مشددتين but it's it follows the next line that's why شيخ أيمن ما شاء الله يعني look at his work ما شاء الله how uh, nice and and uh, precise. So he made this in the, in red because this is separate rule. Then this word it follows the next line, but we're gonna explain it. Akhfian literally means hide. Literally, akhfi means hide. And why he said akhfian? What does this noon mean? Anyone knows? This noon is called what? We mentioned it many times in Jazariya. It came many times. Anyone remember? It's called the huh noon. التوكيد الخفيفة The light noon of emphasis The light noon of emphasis In Arabic, I can tell you قف means stand up, right? قف, okay? If I tell you, if I want to put more emphasis, I say قفن قفن or قفا, right? I put a light noon, قفن, right? If I want to put more emphasis, قفنا Right, Isma'anna. I put anun with shadda. So, two levels of emphasis: the light noon of emphasis, then the heavy noon of emphasis. So this is the light noon of emphasis. Means make sure to hide. Excuse me. Hide what? وأخفيان الميمة. Hide the meme in taskun if it has sukun. بغنة with غنة. الميمة in taskun بغنة لدا. At ba'in, at the ba, ala al mukhtari min ahli al ada, according to the chosen opinion of the people of performance or qira. So that's the, the, the context of that word. So, wa akhfiyan al mima, and hide, and hide the meme if, hide the meme if it is sakina in taskun. So let's try to finish the first line. Basically, what he is saying, Imam uh, Shaykh al Islam Zakaria al Ansari, he, has, uh, he explained Jazari, and uh, Shaykh al Islam Zakaria al Ansari, one of the greatest scholars in the Shafi Fiqh, and they call him in uh, Shaykh al Islam because he, mashallah, in so many sciences, he's his books are reliable, etc. He's a big reference and mujtahid. So he says, uh, as you can see, إِذَا ma ma zaida shuddida. He said, the ghunna sifatun lazimatun lahuma. The ghunna, the nasal sound, is a a constant uh, attribute to the noon and the meme. They never depart the noon and the meme. Can any one of you pronounce for me any noon or any any meme that doesn't have a nasal sound? Can anyone figure out such a sound? Huh? No. The as we mentioned in the makhraj of the noon and the meme, the ghunna is an, an integral, an integral part of the noon and the meme. The noon and the meme they have two parts: oral part or labial part and nasal part, which is the ghunna. So you can never pronounce any noon or any meme without a ghunna. Mashi. So whether they have haraka or sukun, whether they are mudharatain, they are pronounced clearly and distinctly from other letters, or they are merged, okay, mudghamatain, or mudghamatain means other letters have been merged into them. That's mudghamatain. Okay, or two noons or two memes they have been merged together to make a stressed noon, or mukhfatain, or they are hidden, or they are hidden means, as we will see later and learn in the ikhfa, means only the ghunna is left. Tamam? That's what uh, ikhfa, only their ghunna will be left. So that's based on this understanding which is agreed upon, we understand from this sentence of Imam Ibn al-Jazari when he says, 
show or make clear the ghunna of the noon and the meme when they are stressed, when they have shadda. Who can tell me what do you understand from that sentence? We know that noon and meme all the time have ghunna. So when he comes and tell you, show and make it clear, make it clear, make the ghunna clear in the noon and meme when they have shadda. What do you understand? Yeah, guys, I, I don't like, uh, listen, I can open and just read for you everything and color. I want you to interact. I want you to uh, try to conclude. And, and this is the best way of learning, I, I guess. Isn't he, isn't he referring to like the case of longest ghunna? Exactly. The nose? So yeah. since he's telling us, since we already know that ghunna is an intrinsic, is that right, the right word? Yeah. Intrinsic. Yes. Uh, part or attribute of the noon and meme. Here he's telling you, sh make it clear when the noon and meme have shadda. So we understand that when the noon and the meme have shadda, we have to make clearer ghunna, extra ghunna. And the scholars, they call it akmal ma takun. What do they call it in Arabic in the Tajweed term that Sheikh Ayman adopted? Akmal ma takun means the, the, the longest. I translate it longest ghunna. Longest ghunna. Mashi, longest gunna. From that, uh, one of the sheikhs and Quran teachers, mashallah, he's uh, also one of the students of our sheikh, Sheikh Bakri, and he's certified. He asked me this question, like, where we got, where we got this issue of longest gunna and long gunna and short gunna and shortest gunna. So I told him, uh, honestly. I, I don't read a lot of Tajweed books, ancient Tajweed books or modern Tajweed books. I never read a, a modern Tajweed book, by the way. Never. Not a single one. And I will not. I only learned from Sheikh Ayman and the way I read to the Sheikh, may Allah have mercy on him. And I uh, have five, five uh, explanations of Al Jazariya, five different explanations. I uh, scan and go through and try to uh, find any benefits and notes here and there in addition to the, the main material, which is Sheikh Ayman's explanation. I don't like to waste time, honestly, with when already Sheikh Ayman, who has, who is number one in this field, in this age, and uh, he uh, has ijazah in the 10 qiraat, the major ones and the minor ones, the kubra and the sughra, and from the major sheikhs in the Muslim world, which are Syrians and Egyptians. So what's after that? So I don't need to go and search for the proofs of what he says, right? But he asked me like, where you guys, guys got this, that longest hunna, etc. I said, there must be a reference, Yani. And Alhamdulillah, I'll show you, the scholars mentioned these. And for me, I said, Im, uh, when Imam al-Jazari said, Adhiri min noonin wa min meemin ida mashudida, it means there's an extra hunna here. There's a longest hunna here. And Imam uh, al-Jamzuri, in his Tuhfatul Atfal, which is, a, let's say, a smaller version of Al-Jazariya, let's say. It's a, a small poem poem that the kids used to memorize in the Muslim world, mashallah, until now, in some places. He says, Imam Al-Jamzuri, who passed away 1198 of the Hijrah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, shuddida, bada. Ghunna means make ghunna. That's an, a command, amr. Wa ghunna meeman. Thumma noonan shuddida. Make ghunna for the meme and the noon when they have shadda. Wa sammi means name each of them. What do you name them? Harf ghunna. What do you name them? Harf ghunna. Ghunna letter. You name them ghunna letter. So when I tell you what is the ghunna, what are the ghunna letters? You're not going to tell me noon and meme. No, that's not right. You have to say what? Stressed <laughs> noon and meme. Stressed noon and meme. Noon and meme mushaddadatayn, right? Those are called ghunna letters because they have the longest ghunna, okay? They have ghunna akmal ma takun. If you just say noon and meme, that's not right. They're not called ghunna letters. So we have only two ghunna letters. They are noon and meme mushaddadatayn. Noon and meme with uh, shaddat. Then Imam Shaykh al-Islam Zakaria al-Ansari, he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, and he, he's, uh, he's after Imam al-Jazari, yani almost in the 8th Hijri century, yani very ancient. And I'll show you something even 
from the fifth, the fifth Hijri century or the sixth Hijri century by Imam al Dani. Imam al Dani passed away uh, 505, I think. Rahimahullah ta'ala. What does he say? Uh, or four, four, 404, 404, 404, Imam al Dani, uh, Abu Amr al Dani, Uthman bin Said, he's in the, in the Ijaza, in the chain of the main Ijazat. He says, and these are the same words he said, similar words. He said, Here are the four levels of ghunna for those who are searching and asking. He's saying the ghunna is in the sakin, noon, and meme is more than the mutaharrik, noon, and meme. Say an and say na, which is longer. An, na, nu, ni, an. It's slightly longer, right? But it is longer. Same thing. Am, ma, mu, mi. You see, when it is sakina, it's a little bit longer. Wafil mukhfa akmalu minha fil mudhar. When the noon is hidden, let's say, or mukhfa, it's longer than when it is mudhara, means when it is distinctly pronounced. Look at an. An'amta, look at the noon and the meme here, an'amta, and look at insan, obviously, when it is mukhfa, it is longer. Then he says, وَفِي الْمُدْغَمْ أَكْمَلُ مِنْهَا فِي الْمُخْفَى وَنَحْوِي ذَلِكَ And when it is mudghama, then it is even longer than the mukhfa. When you say, inna, when you say, min ni'mah, min ni'mah, it has been merged into the other noon, right? So it is then even longer. Tamam? So these are the four levels of ghunna. When it is mudghama, then when it is mukhfa, then when it is mudhara, and that's when it is sakina. Mudhara, it will be sakina in, in the case of ibhar, right? Without extra ghunna. So that's sakina. And then when it is mutaharrika. Those are the four levels of ghunna. We're going to see them in more detail, inshallah. Uh, so that's very briefly the line. أظهر الغنة من نون ومن ميم إذا ما شددا وأخفيا الميمة. So I think we can stop here. Inshallah, we understood the line. Just whenever you see نون with شدة or ميم with شدة, make longest غنة. What does that mean? Stop on it. Hold on it. In Ladina, you don't say in Ladina, I'm in Ladina, in Ladina. No, the Quran is special. The Quran is Allah's words. Some scholars, like Sheikh Ayman said, Arabic, Arabic speech, the Arabic speech is a three types Shi'r and Nathr and Quran. Or we start with the, the, the best Quran and Shi'r and Nathr. Quran is a special. So the Arabic speech is either the Quran or Shi'r, poetry or Nathr, prose. This is the, the Arabic speech. So the Quran has its special, some special extra things like the extra gunna. The Arabs will never ever say, Inna uh, ladina, when they're in their, in their normal day, day to day speech, right? That will sound uh, silly and 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 uh, like people will never say that, right? Because people people used to people used to contract, right, and abbreviate and also make short sentences and and uh, skip words and letters just to make to uh, uh, to save like some uh, muscle work and to uh, just speak fast, right? But in the Holy Quran, we don't want you to read fast, and if you want to read fast you have to make extra gunna in these cases. So subhanAllah, as I say uh, many times, these, are, these rules are a blessing because they force the students to slow down a little bit. When, you, when students, they tend to speed really fast, they ch drop letters, they change meanings, and that's not right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Holy Quran, what? That's why we're learning all these classes. The purpose of all these classes is to apply this ayah. 
to pronounce every letter clearly and distinctly from the other letter and giving every letter it's right in and reading in a nice uh, melody and tone uh, uh, read the Quran in that way right so uh, applying the gunna is very important it will force the students to slow down a little bit and the other point that we're going to mention inshallah more in details next time is the length of the gunna like for how long I'm going to say Min al jinnati jinn. That's the gunna, right? Jinn. For how long? I'm going to say min al jinnati. That's what we're going to mention, inshallah, next time. Imam al Jazid did not mention it here, but the, he mentioned it in the other books. The scholars mentioned it, and we're going to focus on that, inshallah, because now there's a common mistake. You see in the Tajweed Mus'haf on the bottom, they say gunna. Harakatan, two harakat. And I wish uh, the Tajweed people, I tried to reach them of Dar al Ma'rifa, and I haven't got, gotten the, the, the chance. So I hope they re just remove these two, this word. The word harakatan, they have to remove it because it's not right. The ghunna is not measured by harakat, and the ghunna differs from one rule to another. So if we suppose it's harakat, two harakat, which gunna are you talking about? So just take this word harakatan and just keep gunna, and then the students will learn from the teachers that there are levels of gunna, etc. Mash, uh, we'll stop here, inshallah. Any question about anything we said? I don't want to make it more late, and uh, we can stop here, inshallah. And from next time, we continue. Uh, let me make sure I have, I know where exactly, so we can continue from from the right place next time so we can continue from here yeah any question before we finish up uh yes Sheikh, because i was sort of grown with this uh, harakatan kind of concept and my my do you have like a quick word on this for example what i was taught was like when you have the noon uh, you know sakun followed by yeah noon mean wow you know uh then you have like the gunna and that is like two haraka or you know something like okay, that. Okay. But okay. But which gunna? Which gunna? Which gunna is two haraka? As you as you have seen, we have four levels of gunna, so that yeah. doesn't work. Number one. Number two. Number two. If we suppose the longest gunna is two haraka, so let's compare it. Two haraka means what? This term haraka. It it is used for med, not for gunna. Mashi. Haraka, when you say ba, bu, bi, that's haraka. Mashi, that's called haraka. That's what haraka is. Haraka is not movement of the finger, right? <laughs> but that's what I was told. Uh, okay, told that's you. just for just that's just uh, some teachers. They just use this just to make it easier for people. Okay, but haraka means haraka means a u e ba bu bi. That's haraka because this is something. It's not. Uh, a standard. It's not mundabit. It's not wasaf mundabit. It's not something that uh, that's the same among all people, right? Uh, but the haraka, every person will say ba, bu, bi, ta, tu, ti. Uh. That's haraka. Now harakatan, ba, ba, ta, ta, ba, 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 ta, ta, ta. That's harakatan. Now look, you tell me when I say. Min al You tell me, is that two harakat? You tell me. Min al Is that equal to ba? You tell me. Is it? Min al jinnati. Answer me. Is uh, it? Um, it's Sheikh, not. Because the gunna you know... is longer than the two harakat. That's number one. Number two. Yeah. Number two, and finally. And you, you, you want me to explain it now, but we're going to re-explain. But this is a quick answer anyway. Finally, the gunna length and the mad length differs based on the speed of the reading. So when I'm reading Hadr, That's Hadr. But if I'm reading Tahqiq, I'm not going to say, in the right? In the I have to give the gunna longer time. In the 
So how come the gunna will be to haraka? That will never work in in any of Sheikh, with you all know what? Of these, with this all is of these exactly conditions. this is exactly like the argument I had with my Egyptian teacher back like many years ago, and that's what he sort of told me that it's always relative to the length. For example, jim fata alif sukun ja, right? It's haraka tan, right? So then that would be set as a harakatan. That's a standard. If the Qari, you know, makes whatever the sound he sort of, how long the, that length becomes a standard. And that length basically determines like, you know, the hunna. But it doesn't apply to the hunna. No, 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 no. It, the, as you say, as you, you, you yourself uh, can see it, when you say inna ladina, it's not like ah, uh, it's longer. <laughs> But if I have a stopwatch, Sheikh, because we, we taught kids like it's, all, all, always, it's, it's almost like two seconds, you know? No, no. The harakatan no, no. is like it's two not, seconds. It's not by second, it's not by harakat. It's something you learn orally and you hear how the, the Sheikh, the length we got it from the Sheikhs, that's how it is measured. It's longer than two harakat. But even my word, my this answer or this sentence that I said is even in itself wrong. Because which gunna am I talking about, Ya Habibi? Is it the gunna of ikhfa or gunna of idram shafawi? They are different. You see the point? So that's why forget about the issue of harakat and learn uh, first of all the levels of gunna and then you will learn uh, how long every one of them uh, with the practice and with reading you will see clearly and easily inshallah the, the difference between them. And then when you learn also the different speeds you will yourself see also how that length is changing based on the speed. ماشي بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين. I hope everyone you take the notes uh, you prepare so that uh, class by class so that when we're done with this section you won't find the test as a heavy burden on you. Okay, so take it class by class and take notes and uh, have your notes ready so that إن شاء الله when you have the test. Uh, you will be ready. And I'll, I forgot today to mention some test questions, but I will do next time, inshallah. And I'll not, I'm not going to include them in the notes. I'll only say them and I'll have them in my separate notes. Uh, hopefully this way, the students are encouraged to attend the class uh, and benefit more, inshallah. Mashi barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum.